Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Baller Show. Today episode is about why you as real estate investor should use Harmony Lenders. All right, so Harmony Lenders, who are they? Harmony Lenders are assets-based lenders meaning their underwriting requirements is less about your tax returns and your credit score and more about the value of the property. Most of the time, the local and regional harmony lenders use LTV, loan to value, to calculate their loan amount. Now the national lenders may use loan to cost meaning no matter where you buy the property at, you likely to require to bring in five, 10, 15% to closing. So let's walk through an example. The property has a, an ARV or an after repair value of 250,000, okay? And it needs 35,000 in repairs. Now, most lender will fund up to 70% of the ARV minus repairs. So in this example, the ARV after repair value is 250,000. 70% of that is 175,000 minus 35,000 in repairs. That equal to 140,000, okay? So if you are buying this property for 140, you might just have to pay the closing costs and the lender will fund the rest of the deal. If you are buying this property at a really, really sweet price of 50,000, the lender might roll your closing costs into the loan and they might even roll the interest payments into the loan. So far, so good. Hey, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. All right, so let's talk about the bad. So far, so good, right? So what's the bad? Well, these loans are usually short-term loans of six months to 12 months. So you need to plan your exit accordingly. If you're gonna refi into a hold, you need to make sure that you have your refi lender ready. Like, you know, when you do your loan for your first, your purchase, you need to be planning your exit, okay? If you plan to fix and flip, then you got to make sure you hustle and get your contractor, get everyone lined up and get the work done quickly so that you don't have to hold the property for longer than you need to. Okay. Six months can go really fast. And another bad is they're more expensive than traditional loans. Most of them will charge two point origination. So if your loan amount is 100,000, two point is 2,000, okay? And then they will charge you 12%, 13%, 14%, depending on your experience, depending on your area, and depending on the lenders. Now, if you go over six months, or whatever the term of the loan is, over six months or over 12 months, you may also be charged what they call an extension uh, fee. And that's typically another point another one you know which is one percent of your loan amount so be real careful about planning and if you have to extend make sure you buy them right i'm sorry for this interruption i've been asked a lot about passive investment and let's be real there is nothing passive about being a landlord unless you have a really good property management company so if you own an airbnb or a short-term rental and you want to get back your time please give our team at Buzz Vacation Rental a call at 281-549-8432 or go to our website at pm.buzzvacationrentals.com. Now back to the Real Estate Baller Show. So we'll cover the bad. Let's talk about the good. The one obvious is stay fast because they don't need your two years of tax return. They don't need your bank statements. Well, they do. Some lender will ask for bank statement just to verify your reserve, your, your how liquid you are. They can fund somewhere between like, I've had occasion where I needed the loan to close in three to five days and my Harmony lender did that for me. Now I had relationship obviously, but I'm just sharing how fast that 
it could happen. Okay, another good point is they can serve as a second set of eyes on your deal, especially when you are brand new. When the lenders underwrite these loans, they have to make sure that if you go bad and they have to take the property back, they won't be upside down. So if you can see if they only do up to 70%, typically if things are done right, you know, they will be in the deal for 70% of whatever it's worth, right? If you buy them deep enough, they might roll in all your closing costs and interest payments into the loans. So you essentially have no carrying costs, okay? Um, which is a really great thing if, you know, you are low on cash, right? Or you have a lot of things going on at the time, okay? They will also fund your renovation as well. And this is usually through a draw. Uh, at the time of uh, applying for the loan, you will be required to submit a scope of work. And then they, you can do the draw based on the work that you have completed so that you can use that money to pay for material and pay your contractors. So have I used hard money lenders? You bet. When I first started out, that was all I used, hard money lenders and private money until I gained more experience and build up capital. Then I got a line of credit with m multiple banks to fund my fix and flips and my rental. Today, I still use hard money lender occasionally because it works for those deals. So be afraid when you get into a bad deal, but don't be afraid to leverage. Why do I say that? Okay, here's another example. If you have a hundred thousand dollars and you use that money, that cash to go buy a property, when another good deal come by, you might not be able to buy it until you sell your last one. So buy them right and keep leveraging, keep building your capital until you no longer have to use a lender or you just become your own lender. Thank you all for allowing us to be a part of your real estate investing journey. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on future episodes featuring more real estate strategies and insights. By the way, feel free to leave your comments or questions below as we love to hear from you. Until next time, Keep hustling and keep making waves in the real estate world. I can't wait to see you in the next video.